Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey tea sippers, hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Sunday. So I've been under the weather since Friday. It's been a lot going on, um, but I'm doing a little bit better. So I wanted to come on here and kind of talk about the whole Monique situation. As you guys know, where we left off with the whole Monique is that she went on Club Shay Shay. And, you know, she aired out her grievances once again against Tyler, Oprah, uh, Kevin Hart, and also D.L. Hughley. So D.L. Hughley ended up going off on her. You guys saw his rant that I posted the other day. So they had said something about D.L. during the interview that was a mistake. So Sydney and Monique wanted to um, basically admit to their mistake and take ownership of it. And this was after D.L. drugged them for the filth. And so they came on camera to basically apologize for that, you know, that mistake and Sydney breaks down crying. So like he's crying, Monique starts crying. It's it's kind of low key awkward. Um, but I get it. You know, he has a lot of love for his wife and he just wants things to go smoothly. And they were really happy that the Breakfast Club apologized to Monique. That also brought him to tears as well. So I want you guys to watch this video of Monique and Sydney. Lives and we've seen it, it can be challenging. That is why, D.O. Hughley, I have no hate in my heart for you, brother. When I see you walking through the airport with a support dog, I'm not making fun of you. I'm just saying, brother, if you have to have this. Why are you going after the people like you do? Why? It ain't necessary. Be funny without all of that. And when we speak about Oprah, when we speak about Tyler, when we speak about CBS, we're not speaking about them to call them out. We're speaking to call them up because the same way that the Breakfast Club was able to say, I'm sorry, the same way Brother Lee Daniels was able to go across the stage and apologize, the same way that we were able to say, we are sorry. It was inaccurate about the cease and desist. Is the same way that Oprah, who teaches master classes. Well, sometimes we got to love enough. We got to love the teacher enough. All right, so you guys just saw that video. So, of course, it started going viral, and DL decided to respond. So, he went to his radio show. This was on Friday, and he responded. And DL did not care about them tears. He wasn't here for it. He still went in. So, I want y'all to go ahead and watch what DL had to say back to Monique and Sydney. All right, I, I, I'm taking time to respond to Monique again. She made another greasy ass video with her daddy. Um, we kind of relitigating some of the stuff she said on Club Shay Shay, where she talked about how she was on the show and somebody, you know, they played a game, Would You Rather? And I guess she felt like they insulted her husband's sexuality, which is interesting because she can always talk shit about everybody else's sexuality. But I guess her husband's sex is like, he's off limit. But a hit dog will bark unless his mouth is full. But she talked about, well, she didn't actually call her lawyer. Who the fuck would be afraid of your lawyer? Your lawyer, you mean the lawyer that did your contract? The law, that lawyer, the lawyer from the firm of Negro, Negro, Negro from Ghetto, Got Him and Gone, that lawyer? Who the fuck afraid of him? He couldn't get your name right on a ticket. He gonna get it right on a, on a legal document. It didn't happen because we decided it shouldn't happen. We didn't, you didn't need to because we respect people. We don't have to do things for, t for, for clicks. They took it off because you asked me to. Because I respected you at the time. You also talked about how I um, disrespect you on so many platforms. Uh, but you have yet, you have this impeccable memory where you can tell to the degree well, who did what to you and why and what happened, where you were. But you can't pull up one time on any platform that I said anything about you at all because you know you're lying. You got that piece of paper and that big ass memory, but you can't pull one up. My biggest mistake is saying yes to you. I should have said no when you came on my, you couldn't come on my radio show. I should have said no that I wasn't playing those dates with you. As a matter of fact, I would, almost anybody who says yes to you at some point is, is, is in this milieu with you. Almost anybody. So I would suggest anybody out there, you could say yes to drugs, but say no to Monique. You talked about how, um, you, my children, families are off limits. They weren't when you were running across Vegas. I mean, on the stage in Detroit, they weren't when you talking shit on social media. When you got your ass whipped and your tickets dropped, then they became off limits. 
But let's do this. Let's decide that you will treat my children like you treat yours, like you don't know them, invisible, like you have no relationship with them, like you're estranged, you're, like you're unfamiliar, like you don't know them. You also intimated that I was coward. You know what I'd never do? I would never let my woman take care of me. I would never let my woman get evicted from her apartment. I would never let my woman has to ask another man for money. I'd never do that. Can your old man say the same? He loves you. Of course, he got to say that. You claim him on your taxes. He's a dependent. He's sitting there with you right now. Uh-huh and everything. Because it ain't like he does anything else. But you never address the salient point. I said that if you spent as much time writing your Netflix special as you did arguing about getting it, it wouldn't have been trash. It was. I didn't say it. I defy anybody out there. Stop listening to me. Watch it. Read the reviews. Read the reviews. You beg for something. You made valid points that women are underpaid, that they're not valued. That's absolutely right. So you would think that when you got a chance to do something that you would argue for, you'd be up for the challenge, but you shit the bed because you never are ready for it because all you ever do is complain about what you don't have. You're never ready for the moment because you're always living in the past. I said it. You, if you spend half of your time doing as opposed to talking about who didn't do for you and what they did for you, you'd be a lot further along. You wouldn't be evicted. You wouldn't be working for your man. You wouldn't be asking other comics for money. So you got all the ingredients. Take that piece of paper that you're running down the list with and that pen that you got and that daddy six next to you, the daddy sitting next to you and do what you can't do, do what you never do. Write a fucking joke. All right, so you guys just saw what D.L. Hughley had to say about the situation. And then to make matters even more crazy, Steve Harvey came out speaking about it. But of course, you know, in true Steve Harvey style, he didn't say any particular names. But we all know he's talking about Monique and Cat Williams. And basically he's talking about comedy beefs and it's only with two individuals. The young comics aren't beefing like this. And so he kind of said his piece on his radio station. So y'all go ahead and check this out. Well, you know, I got a couple of things that's on my mind. It's made, mm -hmm. My close remarks are going to be a little seem a little discombobulated but I haven't really had time to put it together it's just some thoughts that I've been having I want to address what's being labeled as comedy beefs y'all comedy was never designed to be this comedy is a is a is a great art form it's always been for the best stand-ups to come into people's lives homes theaters and provide just as hard a laughs as we possibly could. As a stand-up, that was has always been my only goal. This thing that's going around now about comedy beefs, it's only coming really from a few people. It's really not the overall thing. 85 South ain't beefing with nobody. And those are the youngest comedic giants out there. 85 South ain't beefing with nobody. You know, them cats come from the hip hop culture. What you're seeing, man, in these comedy beefs are people who aren't where they used to be. And all of a sudden are using this thing called comedy beefs as a way to get some light shined on them. That's not what comedy is, man. It's just not. I'm going to tell you something. Now, I'm not saying any names, but let me explain something to you. I've been in comedy a long time. In my entire career, was there ever a question about who the headliner was? In my entire career. And on my contract, it said I have been headlining clearly since 1995. I have been headlining since 1995. You know, the, 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 the Kings, we switched up. Like if we went to Chicago, Bernie was closed. We went to St. Louis, say it was closed. We went to, out to L.A., D.L. closed. Whoever's hometown it was closed. But we, we always understood that. One night in Baltimore, Chris Tucker's movie had just came out. Uh, it was Fridays and something else that had came out. And my contract said I was a headliner in Baltimore. We got there, me and Chris were sitting up laughing. And the little uh, new promoter, little boy had some money. He ain't had no business having. He came in there and said, hey, man, uh, I want Chris Tucker to close this show. Chris Tucker had a problem with that. But we talked about it. I said, Chris, he the dude he wanted. I told him, I said, look, man, as long as you pay me my money, I don't care who called. Chris Tucker came to me and asked me, hey, man, just do me one favor, man. 
if you're going to go up first and he got me closing, could you just keep it to 30 minutes? I did 28 minutes exactly. That was the only time in my career. And in my contract, though, I was the headliner. But this dude decided he he liked Chris better. I don't care who it is. That was the only dispute. Look, man, it's known beforehand in the tickets, in the contract. There's no such thing as memos and all like that. You have a contract to sign. And that's who the headline is. And read the marquee when you get there. When you pull up at the front of the theater with on the marquee, it'll tell you that too. It's all simple. So these beefs that people are having, it's always coming from somebody who ain't where they were. That's all I see in this. I just wanted to put that out there, man, for those of you that's not in the business. That's not how this works, man. It's just not how it works. Second thing I want to kind of address is what I see online oftentimes is people talking about that's karma. Every time something bad happened to a person, just for your little blog purposes or sensationalizing, you can't call it karma. Everything that happened in a person's life ain't karma. Sometimes it's just called life. It's just called life, man. And bad things happen to everybody in life. It has nothing to do with karma. It's just like the course of a day. The sun don't shine all day long. There is a period called night. Even a day part has different parts. There's hours in the day. You can't, it's, listen, man. Everything that happens to a person is not karma. And just cause you see something negative happening to a person, it ain't karma. It's called life. If you, if you're grieving over the loss of someone, it ain't cause, nah, nah, there you go, that's karma. No, that's life. A person lose their job, that's life. Hey, hold up. The plant closed. That ain't karma. The plant closed. The plant had a thousand employees. The plant closed. That ain't karma. That's life. A lot of stuff, y'all, is a test of your faith. There are things that are going to happen to you in your life that is going to prepare you for something else. I've learned in my life, and a minister taught this to me, everything that happens to you is God preparing you for what you ask for. If you ask God for more strength, God going to put some situations and some trials in front of you that requires you to be strong. If you are asking God for patience, God is going to put some stuff in your path that makes you have to learn how to wait. That ain't karma. It's life. It's a test of your faith. Stop letting these people fool you with their little sensationalizing acts that every time something happened to a person, they're going to put a story and call it karma. It ain't karma. It's called life. And we all have to experience it. So please, man, be smart about this thing, y'all. And we have got to stop destroying one another. I don't know what it is about us, man, but I'm watching other cultures and it just ain't happening. It ain't just happening. It ain't, it ain't no white groups battling. It ain't no white comedians battling. It ain't no white superstars going at each other and attacking each other. It ain't no old washed up white acts going after the new acts. It ain't none of that. But we keep filling our timelines with this stuff, man. We have got to do better, y'all. We need to turn around. Hey, man, we need to get back to God. We need to start praying more. All right, so you guys just heard what Steve Harvey had to say about the situation. So soon after that, Cat Williams took to his Instagram page and he posted this. Basically, it is a picture of all the top old school comedians. And it says Marvel Civil War, Def Comedy Jam in cinemas the 28th of April. And you see Cat Williams, you see Kevin Hart, you see Monique, DL, Steve Harvey, Dave Chappelle, um, Faison Love, Earthquake, <laughs> Ricky Smiley, Gary Owens, um, Tiffany Haddish, Cedric the Entertainer. So basically they're all here. And oh yeah, even Corey Holcomb, he's in there. He's real little. And so it's like a whole Civil War beef. I think that was his response to Steve Harvey. Like, shut the hell up. We're going to keep this beef going, okay? So then he also went on to post this. He says, what belongs to you will simply find you. Just relax, enjoy your coffee, and co-create with me, the universe. 
So I believe that that was also a message to Monique, because if you guys do not know, Monique announced the other day that she is going on tour with her twin, okay? And I'm kind of excited about this, because you guys know as soon as they announced the Cat Williams tour here in Minnesota, I went and bought eight tickets, and I'm taking eight of my tea sippers. Um, a few of them are coming into town, but we are going to the Cat Williams show. So ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be even more lit, because Monique is going to be there as well in Minnesota, fingers crossed, <laughs> but she did her first appearance um, this past weekend, and she basically came out to standing ovations. Like People were like super happy to see Monique. Here goes her getting her flowers right here. All right, so you guys just saw her getting her flowers. So in between, you know, Monique going on stage, getting her flowers, um, a few other people were not feeling this beef with Monique, Cat Williams, and all the other comics as well. So Stephen A. Smith has finally responded because a lot of people wanted to know his opinion on everything, like the Cat Williams interview, the Monique interview. As we know, Stephen A. Smith and, you know, Shannon Sharp are pretty close. Stephen A. also bought Shannon on his show to, like, help co-host. I don't know if Shannon is still doing it, but I know he did at one point, like, a few months back. But now Club Shay Shay is really popping, so I don't even know if Shannon has any time to, like, do any guest co-hosting. The only time I see him really co-hosting on anything or doing any other podcast outside of Club Shay Shay is when he does Nightcat with Chad Ochocinco. And I think because they're both football players, I, I kind of like that dynamic. Um, it's almost like the football version of Up in Smoke where it has all the basketball players. And so Stephen A., you know, went on like a 20 minute rant and then he proceeded to go on another like kind of 20 minute conversation with Dean Cole. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'm just going to go ahead and post some of the highlights. But um, he had a lot to say about Monique and Cat Williams and this beefing that's going on in the comedy community. So y'all yeah, go ahead and check this out. And we talking to somebody, I mean, it could be Kwame Brown, it could be T.O., it could be somebody. I talk sports. I didn't get in anybody's personal life, characterizing and castigating anybody. That's not selling out. That's doing my job of covering sports. It's not Monique's job to do what she's just done, what she just did. It wasn't Cat Williams' job to do what he did on Club Shay Shay weeks ago that now has over 68 million views, by the way. It wasn't their job to call out Kevin Hart and Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, Ricky Smiley, Michael Blackson. Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry. It wasn't their job. That was a choice. A choice that extended far beyond the corridors of their job. That now has black America taking sides. And looking at one another with an elevated level of skepticism and disgust while having others outside of our community look at us that way as well. And that's a subject that we're going to tackle on the Stephen A. Smith show today. We're not running from this. We're going to talk about it. Whether it's Monique, it's Cat Williams, or even if it's my brother, Shannon Sharp for Club Shay Shay. I got a lot to say. A whole lot. It's about time that it gets addressed in a manner that it deserves. I have no choice. Now, some people would ask the question, why is that? He's a grown ass man. So are you. He's doing his thing. You're doing your thing. I will remind you that Shannon Sharp is a major, major contributor to my daytime, my daytime job, which is first take on ESPN. And to be quite honest with you, we've grown to become friends. I got a lot of love for the brother. I respect the hell out of him. He's a three-time Super Bowl champion. He's a Hall of Famer. 
And the reality is, is that he's doing big things. You can say what you want, but 68 million views for the Cat Williams interview is 68 million views. The first order of business with Monique in this interview in day one, with it being 5 million views. Ladies and gentlemen, that's over 73 million views. You can say whatever you want to say. You can't, you just can't take away from that reality and what Shannon Sharp has brought to the table. The flip side to that, however, is that when you do interviews of this nature, we've heard noises emanating from our community because both of us are black men. I'm from the North New York City. He's from the South. It doesn't matter. As black men, as brothers, as black people, what Dion Cole alluded to on numerous occasions in terms of negativity selling, in terms of us going after one another, what Chris Spence, Spencer alluded to when he talked about how nobody does this to one another but black people, it's inescapable. It's a reality. And so as a result of that, I have to answer questions because people have literally asked me, Stephen A., what do you think about how Shannon Sharp interviewed Cat Williams and Monique, what do you think about the pushback or lack thereof? Why give somebody the platform to come out on your show and say all the things that they said? I'd be lying if I said those were not legitimate questions. I'd also be remiss in neglecting to inform you that I personally asked Shannon Sharp to come on this podcast and discuss it. To his credit, Although he's not here, he was willing to come on. He just had other commitments because he knows I'm his brother and I'm not trying to backdoor him. And I'm going to say stuff, something rather, that a lot of people are not going to like. I don't believe that Shannon Sharp is just an entertainer. I believe he's a voice. He's a voice in our community that is elevating by the day. He matters. And because he matters, with that level of significance and cachet comes a level of responsibility, some would say. But when you do it to the point where you're trying to act as if he shouldn't have them as guests, or somehow, some way, he could have curtailed or edited out what they've said, I'm not going to go that far. Shannon Sharp is under no obligation to edit or alter genuine thoughts that his guest has on his shows. If that's how they feel, that's how they feel. Now, would I have been a little bit different? Sure, because I'm a trained journalist. And as a result, the level of pushback that I would give, I'm seasoned and trained to do it spanning 30 years. When Shannon Sharp was on Club Shay Shay, or Nightcap rather, Weeks ago, and he said to Chad Ochocinco during one of his telecasts, I'm not Ed Bradley, the late Ed Bradley, God rest his soul. I'm not 60 minutes. I'm not 48 hours. I'm an entertainer. My only retort to him was that you're not just an entertainer, you're a voice. And take that voice into consideration whenever you do whatever it is that you do so you're never telling somebody that you're just an entertainer. Because you're more than that. Outside of that, I have a very, very, very difficult time looking at the day and age that we're living in, seeing 68 million views here, 5 million views there, over 73 million views for just two interviews, and asking somebody to, to ignore the significance of that, knowing most people wouldn't. Because that's being full of shit. That's not being authentic. Most people wouldn't ignore that. Now, again, I would have pushed back on Cat Williams on several things because the personal in which he went about the business of highlighting his attacks and illuminating his attacks against Kevin Hart, against Steve Harvey, against Ricky Smiley, Cedric the Entertainer, Michael Blackson and others, or I would have won a receipt. I would have had to dig a little dig. I would have had to dig a little more. That's just me. That's just me. Steve Harvey's a friend. Kevin Hart's a friend. 
If they came on this show right now and they were talking about Cat Williams in the fashion that Cat Williams talked about them, I would have grilled them. Because when you sit in front of this microphone, in front of this camera, my belief is that in pursuit of truth, you have to be objective. Now, you can be subjective once you receive the truth about how you receive it, how you interpret it, how your perspective is, and what you disseminate to the masses. That's fair. But in pursuit of the truth, the objectivity has to come reigning through. Well, how can somebody feel comfortable enough ever talking to you if they think that their messages are going to be disseminated to the masses when it was supposed to be a private conversation? You talked about Kevin Hart and how you were supposed, he said, I love you, sister. We'll talk in two weeks. And then after that, you never heard from him again. Okay. Did you play any role in that? I'm just asking. Did you? I don't know. But when you bring these kind of things up and you talk about Oprah, I'm quite sure Oprah ain't perfect. I'm quite sure there are an abundance of people, black, white, and beyond, that have had issues with things that Oprah has done that have negatively affected them. But we all know how much positive Oprah generated for so many of us because she showed us the way in so many ways about how to excel in this industry and in life. Does it have to be that bad? Even after all this time. And to me, Monique is looking like somebody who feels like she's finished and there are people to blame for it. I don't think you're finished. I think you're great. I think you'll be back. I think you'll do great things and I can't wait to see you do them. Hell, I'm trying to produce stuff. I'd love to have Monique in it. Because that's how brilliant of an actress you are. Of a talent you are. So I just wanted to say that. All right, so you guys just saw what Stephen A. Smith had to say. Now, what I will say about this is that I'm starting to get jealousy teased. Now, this is not me trying to pin, you know, two black men against each other, but he seems a bit bothered, you know, that his understudy, quote unquote, Shannon Sharp is blowing up. Stephen A. Smith is starting to give me the energy that I always talk about on this channel. People love to see you doing good until you're doing better than them. And once you're doing better than them, it definitely makes them feel away. And that's the vibe I'm starting to get from Stephen A. Smith and a lot of these other celebrities. I don't understand why Shannon Sharp keeps getting strays. At the end of the day, he's always stated he's not a journalism. He's a conversationalist. He just likes to have people come on. He gives them a platform for them to get things off their chest. You know what I'm saying? For them to speak. There's not all these ignorant ass interruptions. He's not acting like he's bored and would rather be somewhere else. I like Willie D, but that interview with Cat Williams, I couldn't even watch five minutes of it. And there was like another part where Cat Williams wanted to spill some tea to Willie D and Willie D turned around and made it about himself and then Cat Williams forgot what he was going to say. And so a lot of people did not like the Willie D interview with um, Cat Williams, unfortunately. And, you know, Shannon Sharp, he's a good listener. He's not just letting them rant and rave like lunatics. He's actually listening. And then he'll interject when he needs to interject. And that is how you have a good conversation. When you are interviewing people, it shouldn't feel like some cold interview. You shouldn't feel like you're distracted and would rather do something else. It shouldn't be like you're grilling somebody like you're the feds, <laughs> Vlad. Okay? It should sound like a conversation. It should sound like you and your homegirl, you and your homeboy are on the phone, like you've known this person your whole life. And so I really respect Shannon's interview style because that's how I kind of am too. When I interview people, I want people to be comfortable. I want them to just speak and get things off their chest. I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to wag a finger. This is your time to shine. And I love the fact that Shannon does that. You have too many interviewers who try and make it about themselves. Well, if you want to make it about yourself, then just do a solo podcast and talk on day. Don't call yourself an interviewer if all you're going to do is then turn around and it's me, 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 me. So I really love Shannon Sharp's style. And it seems like his success with Club Shay Shay is really bothering a lot of these other males. You know, we've seen Stack 5 hating on him not too long ago. And other people are saying that, you know, he's being messy. He's the new Medea. He's doing too much. 
And now Stephen A. Smith is kind of low-key feeling bothered as well. And the thing that's very interesting is that Shannon Sharp has interviewed dozens of other guests and he's given them the same respect. He's allowed them to speak, get things off their chest. But it's very interesting that because he decides to give somebody like Cat Williams and Monique a platform, all of a sudden his platform is tainted. Um, you know, it, it's not a good look. I just, I didn't like the story that he was trying to paint because I don't think his platform is tainted at all. And I think the problem is Stephen A. Smith is straddling the fence because he has industry relationships and friendships with these people. And that's really what it is. He can't really pat his so-called friend Shannon Sharp on the back because he doesn't want to mess up these other relationships with, you know, Steve Harvey and DL and things like that. So it's like he's caught between a rock and a hard place, but that's not Shannon Sharp's fault. You know, and even Shannon Sharp knows that him bringing them on, you know, his platform may interfere with his relationships with other people, but he doesn't care. This is what I tell people. If you watch us or you listen to us, I'm a conversationalist. Me too. If you want hard hitting, that's 60 minutes. That's Dateline. That's 48 hours. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to open up the floor. I'm not going to cut the guest off. A lot of times, people that have platforms like this, they like to hear their voice. When people watch, when they turn on and they listen and they watch or they listen to Club Shay Shay, they want to hear my guest voice. So my job is to get out of the way. P-Mac, I had to make a split-second decision because when he came on, he was already on one. If you remember, he was doing this. <laughs> so I already knew because he, he were talking, and I was like, okay, let's get him mic'd up. How long you talked to him before? We talked, he got there early, so that's why I lost track of time. Because normally we, when they said, okay, we're going at noon, okay, I get there around 1130. CJ and I, who is the producer, oh, any last minute, you know, things, and I, I'll go and I'll say, CJ, I think I want to start here, and I want to go in this direction. He's like, okay, hey, I trust you, do what you do. And so he gets there early, and so he's talking, and I say, okay, let's get him mic'd up. So we go 15, 20 minutes before the noon hour. So I'm, I'm thinking in my mind, damn, we started at noon. But I forgot that we started 20 minutes early. And so once he gets going, so I'm like, okay. He says, so I, I give my introduction. I welcome to Club Shay Shay, blah, blah, blah. I tell you who he is, some of the things that he's done. And so I'm, how you doing, Cat? We, we toast. And now I'm about to ask my first question. And he says, I want to tell you why I came. Okay, tell me why you came. He goes 30 minutes before I'd ask a question. Now, I, I could have easily <laughs> cut him off. At La Portier. Yeah. <laughs> I could have I easily cut him off, P-Mac. But if I'd have cut him off, maybe he loses his train of thought. Maybe he doesn't get to what he got to. He goes 30. Okay, now it's my time to get in here. Okay, let's where you're from. But a lot of the stuff he was saying, because I don't live in that world. People think because, oh, Shannon, you live in Hollywood. You have that. You must have heard. You must have been. No, bro. I got my own thing. And what somebody else has going on, they ain't got ish to do with me. That ain't my life. They don't. That doesn't pay my bills. So why am I worried about what somebody else is doing? Okay, you decide, fans, Preach. listening, watching. You decide whether or not you believe him. Was it tough hearing some of the things that he was saying? Yes, because I have a personal relationship with Earthquake. I've had Steve Harvey on the show. I consider him a friend. I've had Ricky Smiley on the show. Kevin Hart, I've been to his home. So to hear some of this stuff, but it's not my place to say, Cat, you got to stop. Oh, you wrong. That's a lie. Because I'm taking, just like when Ricky Smiley said that he was originally supposed to play the Santa Claus, I'm taking him at his word because I wouldn't know that. Nobody has ever heard that before. I'm thinking he's t that's that's truth because he's on the set. Credible source. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So why, why would I, why would I, if so... Oh, if I believe, if, if I'm to believe that someone is coming on my show and everything out of their mouth is a lie, why the hell would I have them on? Yeah. And I appreciate him for allowing people like Monique and Cat Williams to talk openly. You know what I'm saying? And to be genuine. Because what Wanda did to Cat Williams a few years ago was so uncalled for and was not okay. And I understand how Monique feels because so many times... You know, especially as black women, dark skinned black women, we're not heard. Nobody cares how we're treated. And then when we speak up and say, hey, this isn't right, then it's you should just be happy that your black ass is in this space. You should just be happy that you're even here because you don't look like them over there. So you should just be grateful for whatever crumbs we throw at you. Take these crumbs and shut the fuck up. And that's how a lot of us are treated in these spaces. And so I understand Monique's frustration. I understand, you know, the things that she's been going through and not being really able to express herself as much. So 
I really love what Shannon Sharp is doing. I don't care what Stephen A. Smith says. So now let's go ahead and segue to Judge Mathis. Now, you know, we all love Judge Mathis. We all grew up on his show. But Judge Mathis also had some things to say about Monique and just all of the beef that she has going on. So I want you guys to go ahead and listen to this as well. I want to appeal to our comedians to stop going after each other in public like this. You're embarrassing yourselves. You're embarrassing our community. I know many times you have to defend yourself about what's being said, but why can't we do it directly? And I just want you to know, I believe that we're being laughed at at all the major studios and by their executives seeing us in public, black folks going at each other. You don't see this among other communities. And that's why I say you're hurting yourselves and you're hurting our community and you're hurting the young people who are looking and want to learn and need to learn how to resolve disputes in a better way. I'm no saint. I'm guilty of having temper issues from time to time on my show. That's entertainment. You guys, say what you want as part of your entertainment, but don't go out your way and personally attack each other, particularly your families. I appeal to you for that. Let's turn on. Let's not turn on each other. Let's turn toward each other. Now, I get what Judge Mathis is saying, and it wasn't just entertainment, Judge Mathis. You also, when Wendy Williams said some things about you that you didn't like, you went in on her drug her for the filth, honey, talked about her coke issues and everything else. So, you know, we all have our breaking points where we're not going to keep allowing people to disrespect us. But what I find very interesting is when Cat Williams was saying that he's being lied on and disrespected, Monique and Cat Williams' story has never changed because I've been following up on this situation for years. I've talked about it for years. So this is not new. They've been saying this. Their stories have not changed. Why hasn't anybody gone to those people and say, hey, let's make it right? Hey, what's going on? Hey, you guys are wrong. The thing is, we're always worried about what other races think, what the white man thinks, what the white community thinks, what the executives think. And that's the problem. Everybody wants to lack integrity, you know what I'm saying, until it comes to them being wrong. Then it's, well, where's the integrity? Where's the good faith? Why doesn't anybody have my back? And we shouldn't give a damn what the execs say. If you're wrong, you're wrong, period, point blank. And I wish they would have came out and said all this when it was the men attacking each other. But now that Monique is out here speaking, now it's, oh, we got to calm her down. You're doing too much. You know, so I just thought that was very interesting. So now this leads us to this viral video that's going viral today. And basically, Monique is on stage and she addresses Stephen A. Smith and she also addresses Judge Mathis and she low-key apologizes to Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey. Y'all go ahead and check this out. I heard you, Stephen A. Smith. I want y'all yeah, to understand that. something about me. That. When I have communicated something wrong, I'm a bitch who's gonna say, I'm sorry. I'm a bitch who's gonna own what the fuck I said. I'm a bitch who gon' walk in with the fuck I said. And I owe two motherfuckers an apology because I communicated some shit wrong to them some years ago. Tyler Perry said I have to give him and Oprah Winfrey a public apology. And I'm gonna give it right now tonight in front of you niggas in Albany, New York. Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry, I wanna apologize for telling y'all to suck my dick. <laughs> All right, so you guys just saw that video. And for y'all who don't know what she said, because a lot of people are like, oh, she messed up. I can't believe she apologized to them. This is silly. Why would she do that? Um, you know, she's looking weak. She's not standing on business. But if you guys really listen, because I know the audience was laughing, Monique says this, I want to apologize for telling y'all to suck my peen because I forgot to tell y'all to lick the nuts that came with them. So that was really her response. That's what she was saying to them. So this wasn't a true apology. Monique is still being Monique, being low-key messy. So again, it's going to be very interesting. I hope that she doesn't keep talking about Tyler and Oprah, you know, by the time she gets to Minneapolis in April, because I don't want to hear it. I'm there for a good show. I'm there to have a good old funky time. I get her addressing it because, you know, the whole Club Shay Shay thing. But I hope by April, everything has simmered down a bit because we just want to laugh and then go out to eat afterwards. But I'm just saying. Anyways, y'all, go ahead and leave a comment. I look forward to reading y'all's comments down below. Thank you guys so much once again for the support on my channel. It's very much highly appreciated. 
Um, also, make sure you guys hit the like button. Feel free to share the video, and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.